What you are going to see now is part of a documentary we did with Richard Shaw, producer of Pinlight, sitting here on the left with me, Rabbi Gleason, unfortunately passed away. So what he did is outstanding work in this documentary and to darkness, you can get it on Amazon, you can read it also, quite cheap. And unbelievable findings. Ten years ago, it means the Bible, you see the Bible quotes, exactly Hamas murdering three youngsters. A famous story that all Israel spoke about it. And this is really what you are going to see, how we found it in the documentary, the name of this youngster, the year when it happened, unbelievable. So this is what you are going to see. It's much, much more in this documentary. Whereas while watching all of it, one after the other, it means you see clearly because they are connected. What I got to show you is part of it. And definitely the idea is to show what our Bible code or Torah codes, uh, because this is an outstanding example in which we'll see just now people who are involved, Professor Aralik, Professor Ripps, definitely, Atlevich, Dr. Rothenberg. So now what you see here is myself explaining to Richard Shaw how the Bible God works, how we find things, what makes significant, minimal, good meetings, whatever it is. So this is really what I explained to him, and part of it you are going to see. Final results are often stunning and unexplainable. And this was prior to the big Hamas war that happened in 2014. Yeah. Uh, where these boys were kidnapped yeah. and murdered. So you thought you would look up a table yeah. about the three boys. Yeah. But what you discovered was just so amazing that no, seems we call the access keyword is the first one that you yeah. put up exactly. to see. Show us how you yeah. do that. So what we know is that those, children, those boys were killed on the year 774. Yeah, what you see here the following. You see here the Hebrew words Mot Nearim. Mot Nearim is a death of the boys. So now you can see here clearly the year, Tav Shin Ein Dalet, seven months ago. And in it you see Hamas. Here I write the word Mechabel. In Hebrew means terrorist. Mechabel. You can see it down here, yeah? Mechabel. And then again I give the command to look for it in the table. So I will also, <laughs> I have a 28 times Mechabel, but I will interest in the minimal. Yeah, 28. But I want the minimal one. And what is the minimal one? Minus four? Four, yeah. So all together you have in this part, terrorists of Hamas in the year Tavshina and Dale, caused death unto the boys. And then Professor Rips, looking into this table, he found the place, the area, the district, where the boys were found buried. It was a field belonged to somebody in the area where they found. It was in Hebron, but it was a, a small part in Hebron, which, which was called Herbet Arnav. The table was sent to all the professors and rabbis for further study, and several new tables were created. This table, which was a collaborative effort, had all the most important keywords about the kidnapping of the three boys. But Professor Harold was concerned that the probability factor and compactness of the words might be improved. So he created another table from scratch, which we're seeing here. Professor Ricks, perhaps the one most responsible for moving the science of the Torah codes into reality, then worked on his own set of tables. As usual, his findings were impressive, with even more information grouped into parallel lines making it more unlikely this table could be duplicated in any text other than the Torah. It also contained a new phrase, killed my people, at the top of the page. 
And then today, soldiers found the bodies of 16-year-old Naftali Frankel, the American, and his two teenaged friends, Gilad Shaar, 16, and E.L. Yifrak, 19. The three had been hitchhiking home near the West Bank city of Hebron late at night and were never heard from again. I think the coach have a lot to say about this new reality, which in fact is not so new because the, the codes were, were given to us, the Torah was given to us over 3,000 years ago. But now in our generation, we're waking up to, to what to this gift that we that we receive that there seems to be technology intertwined with the torah in our generation we need the technology in order to unlock the secrets in the torah through this method of torah codes if somebody produces a table and says oh this is an amazing table look how interesting it is and he points to a couple of ELSs on the table and they say oh look at it's on the table and look how interesting it is it's um, predicting a um, some gloomy event someplace well this is very interesting the work that you've done but um, maybe if I went to uh, a novel that is just as good in the way it looks as your table why should I think that your table is interesting it's just a random thing that happened and you you used by interacting with a with a computer application a program and if that table can be be produced a similar so how do you counter that kind of an argument and indeed it's the case and i'll produce a table that has ELSs of those keywords that you suggested sure so how do i know that what is going on is really interesting so now there's a key concept, and this concept is employed by code breakers in all of the equivalent places like the, our National Security Agency. You do an experiment a priori. You found it by snooping, looking right. at the table. If the Torah text and all the monkey texts were a million texts total, and we found that 10 texts had a number as good or smaller than the Torah text, then the probability that the event we observed on the Torah text, the probability that it would happen by chance, is 10 divided by a million, one out of 100,000. And so can you run a million other texts at a time in the Monte Carlo experiment? Yes, yeah, we can run. It just takes, it's not, uh, yeah. it doesn't happen uh, in three seconds. Right. Maybe it takes some hours to do. Do you uh, link a bunch of computers together, network them, in order to get more power to do that? Um, we have programs that will uh, run on, on a, a crate machine, a supercomputer, and can utilize many, many cores. If we need to, we can do that. So I rips well-noted Twin Towers table and do it using monkey texts that were non-encoded. So he did. The results showed how the Torah text was well ordered, and that while the other texts had the same key words, the resultant codes were completely insignificant and required thousands of letters, while the one Professor Reps found came up entirely in chapter 20 of the Book of Numbers. Again, they're showing that this outside agency is able to construct uh, the first five books of the Bible, i.e. the Torah, in such a way that there are codes within codes within messages which which sometimes over when overlay the plain text, which is just astounding when that happens. When when someone does a, a, a code and all of a sudden the answers come right over the plain text, which of course is very apropos to what the question was. So you've got the plain text, which let's say one of my favorites is um, three thousand died that day and the twin towers, that whole matrix and the code was profound. And the Torah code seemingly is calling out uh, the amount of, of people who perished that day uh, before the body count was actually tallied up. During the BP oil disaster in 2010, a table was discovered with the keywords oil well, leaking, and the date all found over the plain text. The fountains of the deep were broken up from the book of Genesis. Time-space displacement and time space as we know it um, is, is really an illusion. We're stuck in space-time, but the God of the Bible dwells outside of space-time. In 2008, 
I met with Professor Rips to see what the Torah codes might say about the year 2012. Nearby you have Butal, which was cancelled. And in the plain text we say, no, yeah, will not be on it. Will not be. This is, um, this is Exodus chapter 16, uh, um, verse 26. Actually, it says they are planned because cancelled means that something was designed to happen. And then, for some reason, it is cancelled and will not happen. So, this just points exactly to this point that we are discussing. That if we even see some, that might be very clear indication, still it could be reversed by the additional events or additional commentaries that we have here. So this is something that one has to, to bear clear in the mind. Otherwise, this will lead to major confusion and misunderstanding. When you discover that people are talking about some major topic, and then you look for key words in a Torah code experiment, and you find it, it doesn't mean that that is going to happen in the future. It means that people are talking about it. Those key words, attack, twin towers, airplane, were in the topic sentence of headlines in newspapers all around the world, in fact. People were talking about the event. And the complexity um, but not only of just the plain text, but now in modernity, as we begin to see these, with the use of computers, to, to we're able to go in and, and what used to take maybe months now happen very quickly. We can see um, these messages that are integrated in with the text. And that to me is absolutely profound. There's a need for hope in our generation, especially these days. And I think the codes provide a lot of hope. Uh, we see a combination of death and destruction, and also a great hope that there will be joy, you know, finally. Yeah. We don't know how much, what the combination of death and destruction and joy is going to be, but we know that the end game is joy. So really what you're saying is, so, so, 1976 was the year that okay. all of you had oh, found the out about it. started, came out, yeah, very well Right. And now... The end of darkness yeah. is basically when you don't see things, you don't understand what is going on. Right. Now the codes tell you what is going on. The, uh, of course, the original Torah did not have any punctuation marks or You've shown me some really interesting things about when you take the commas out of a passage in Hebrew, it, it actually opens up something that we didn't expect to be uh, there. That is a known fact. If you go today to a synagogue and you read any of the scrolls, you would find no punctuation marks. They were added. Uh, by the Mesorites of Tiberius um, at later time. So, for example, this is a passage from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28. Our brothers have frightened us, saying, There are people there superior to us with large fortress cities. And then comes a nebulous word in the sky uh, for no apparent reason, and we saw the giant people there. That's what the uh, spies are saying. It's referring to the Nephilim again. 11 sites targeted by the terrorists. At least 172 people, including six Americans, were killed. We were just ripped to shreds by bullets. Where the bullet went through the Torah scroll in Chabad House, exactly in the place in the Torah that it said Mumbai massacre. And, and, and that table was found by Moshe Katz. Well, then to put icing on that particular cake, I asked him, I said, the name of the artist is Robin Hanley. Why don't you run? and see if that appears anywhere near my name. No, that I didn't know. Did he run a test with her name as well? It intersected mine. Oh, this is what it so amazes me about the Torah codes when things like that happen and when they actually point to a physical object in our time period. I mean, the odds are just incredible. Yeah, he said that was literally a physical manifestation of, of the Torah code. Your old scroll that seems to have been encoded. At times, it's almost like a diary of events of our current day and appears to have been encrypted, timestamped so that none of it could have been revealed until now.
So what does this mean? Could the codes be a clue that we are reaching some sort of end to the problems that are affecting the whole world? Has religion become so steeped in dogma and ritual that we no longer believe the possibilities that miracles could exist? And a scary thought, could we also be encoded in this book of miracles? And if we are, what does the Torah say about us?